all set? Yes. We'll call the meeting to order at 6 o'clock. First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions, Dan? Yes, I have um, one addition that's a point, a part time permanent uh, employee at the uh, EMS department. And I have one deletion. Um, I know the board wanted a full board for the zone, zoning waiver discussion, and one member had an emergency tonight, wouldn't be able to hear. Um, so I'd like to delete the zoning waiver discussion. Okay, sounds good. Next, approve the minutes. The minutes of September 16, 2019. So moved. I have a motion. Second. And a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So I abstain. Wasn't there. I wasn't here either. There we go. No, that works. But <laughs> you can vote. You don't have to abstain. Aye. Aye. Motion passed. <laughs> Next, community concerns. Alan, would you like to address us? Thank you very much. Um, I'll try to agree with this point. Um, as many of you are aware, uh, the Warsaw Road Village Trustee is passing a sewer ordinance on September 18th, 2019. The reason for me to come here this evening is just to publicly get it in front of you and let you know our thoughts and our feelings upon it. Um, this ordinance was passed without a rate structure included. So the businesses that are potentially on the hook for any rates, we have no idea what to expect. <clears throat> the, source, the ordinance gives the village the ability to impose new rates and fees on any business, restaurant, school, hospital, basically anyone in town with a toilet or anything more with a toilet, um, that is uh, the, the, the rate structure is 300 milligrams or the, the threshold is 300 milligrams of BOD over an average of five day period. Now, the typical residential home is 230 milligrams of BOD, biological oxygen and being BOD. Um, Morrisville basically does not have the infrastructure nor resources to test in, or enforce all of this, what would need to be done in order to impose proper rate fee structure. So therefore, what they're proposing is implementing a new rate fee structure on just three businesses, three small family owned businesses within town. Uh, although within the bylaw, or according to this ordinance, they really would have to impose this new fee on every restaurant, every hospital, every school, everybody, but they don't have the ability to test those. So again, the three businesses are gonna fall, fall off the uh, burden of this, of this new ordinance. Um, in the spring of 2019, to, to support that statement is uh, 27 sites around, uh, random sites around town were tested. Um, 24 of those 27 sites tested above 300 milligrams per liter. So 24 would need to be tested, would need to face the new rate surcharge. Um, yet again, they're only still um, trying to levy these new fees on us, on three businesses. Of equal concern is the Morseville Water and Light newsletter that was mailed to all ratepayers on July 19, 2018, uh, where, quote, it stated that, quote, flow levels are in the 50% range of plant design capacity while BOD levels are in the 80% range of plant design capacity. But actually in 2019, beginning in January, the BOD numbers of the plant started to decline. And 2019 has been the lowest average year of BOD since 2011, what the plant has seen. So the inconsistencies within the reporting coming out of water and light are rather concerning, especially given that it was right ahead of their passage of this ordinance. Uh, in research on the sewer plant upgrades, uh, in 2009, when the upgrades were done to the plant, I was able to identify that by reading the plans of the upgrades and passing this uh, among, um, among numerous wastewater engineers and professionals, that the design for the plant considered a maximum, maximum inflow of BOD of 280 milligrams, which is slightly higher than an average residential, as we've already stated. Uh, so therefore, um, all the wastewater engineers and professionals I spoke to believe that it was a flawed design. Um, it was not taken into consideration to increase in business. The only considerations that were done at the storm plant was an increase in residential assumptions. We didn't take into consideration any business. So again, back to these uh, few businesses that are basically, there are three businesses in town that are looking at facing this rate surcharge. We have no idea what to expect. It's anywhere from, uh, it's been said anywhere from eight to $32,000 for my particular business, um, up to $65,000 for another business. So this is not a small change within a small family owned business uh, realm. Uh, so right now we're in the 45 day um, uh, petition period, and we're collecting signatures hoping to postpone this uh, ordinance and have it put on the town meeting agenda. Um, I believe it comes, it will have to come in front of you as well. Um, so I would happily answer any questions at any time for you and hope that um, you would consider not passing this until we can figure out a way uh, to have it more fair and equitable among everyone. And according to state statute, any municipality would need to pass uh, a rate ordinance. They have the ability to, but it has to be quote equitable. So 
three businesses in town when we've already identified that there are many others in town contributing. Um, just doesn't seem equitable. Uh, and then once we, we're seeing the plant numbers coming down dramatically, it's another reason we, what we're doing there. What's the point? So um, thank you for your time. I just wanted to get publicly in front of you, and you all know where to find me if you have any questions. Do you have his petition? Uh, it's at the very. Okay. So, um, but I'd happily chop it off if anyone's interested. <coughs> Dan, do you want to comment on I, I think you think for your petition, since it is just at the village level right now, I think that would be a village resident. It has to be a village resident. It has yeah. to be a village resident yeah. to, to sign it. So um, the other thing, too, is you know, right now I have not brought anything to the board as far as adopting a mere ordinance that, nor would I, is fine. Um, so, and, you know, I've got some ongoing discussions with, you know, one of the other businesses in town, too. So. Um, it's something that, you know, we had a committee put together over the last year, year and a half that put a, a lot of time into it and did a, a lot of research and did a lot of meetings on site with people. So, um, you know, it's, it's a very, very important, I think, from everybody's perspective, community discussion, I think, is the best way for me to it. And that's so just figured you could get funny. Yeah. 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 How many really signatures do you need? Uh, we need, uh, according to 77, okay. uh, but that would have to be village voters, and according to Thomas and past petitions, you should probably shoot for about 200 just to be safe. So we'll get there. Yeah, I appreciate you bringing it forward. We, you know, as you know, we've met this sort of partners ad hoc committee with Dan and myself and Eric Dodge, and attended lots of meetings, <coughs> and uh, I'm pretty frustrated at this point, kind of. We're still waiting for answers as far as um, when other businesses might be tested um, and when the rate structure might actually happen. Um, that's been a bit ambiguous. And, um, you, know, you know, we have you have our support. We're gonna yes. we'll do what we can. And uh, I I agree it should be fair and equitable to everybody. I think I mean it raises more money for everybody. You know, it's like everybody yeah. should be built. I have no problem. We have no problem paying. Right. It's just a matter of the equitability. And, and, sure and I know the other businesses that are also implicated also feel the same way. You know, I have a problem with paying just by allocation because you're you're a big business. You know, I think you should pay according to what you put down the drain, but not not allocation. Right now, you know, that's been an ongoing conversation. But we actually have a plan to meet with them very soon. And um, those are some of the questions I wanted to have answered too, what you're talking about. Okay. So, but I do appreciate you bringing it before us and we'll do what we can to help you. Thank you for the support. Have a great day. Thanks, Alfred. Nice. 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 Next, liquor control. Do you have any tonight? No. No. Old business, discuss lease of the Noise House Museum. <laughs> I, I, I thought maybe it'd be somebody from the noise house. Yeah, in, in the past, it was discussed, you know, um, as the, the the town owns the actual property and the building for the noise house, and the historical society owns the collection. Um, I think there's been some concern raised from the noise house uh, the, or the historical society about what's the relationship with the town and, and their use of the building. And it was um, asked at one point in time and brought up again. If the select board would be interested in entering into a, a long-term lease with the historical society um, to give everything some stability, I guess is the best way to put it. So um, I don't know what the thoughts are on that, or a term lease, or what everybody's looking for. Uh, I feel like uh, you know the, the board, the air board, really wants to have that fuzzy feeling that we're not going to turn it into a cafe or something like that. I know Jim might just talked about that and. Uh, was worried because we talked about some changes that we might do, you know, with parking and, and so on, because we do own the property. But uh, I don't have a problem, you know, sort of giving them that guarantee that we're not going to take it from them. We're going to make sure that they they can have it as it is. But uh, the lease is going to would have to be written in a way that uh, doesn't take some of our rights away as well. So I don't know what you guys think about it. I agree with the same thing. I was wondering how, how it works and why why is it even uh, because they need our help. If they lease it from us, are they taking over the the bills and stuff? No, we would still be well we you know, we have been putting roughly thirty 
some thousand, thirty-two thousand a year in the building, and, yeah. and and doing a lot of the things that and really it's necessary repairs to the building. These aren't the things behind. These are these are things that are behind. Yeah. Um, so um, all the things that we've been done, and it's been a pretty thoughtful plan, and they've been great to work with. You know, we pointed the the exterior this year. That all definitely needed to be done to preserve it. We stabilized you know one of the, the the chimneys and the structure quite a bit. We, you the know, um, and the tram yeah, and exactly. We've we've done a lot of work over there or with their help, not just us, but um, it, it really made sure that the, the structure was sound because there was a lot of concern about that. And I think we've got that piece of it pretty well covered right now. Yeah. Um, so we would still be responsible for doing everything that we are doing now. We're just kind of really guaranteeing them that they'll be able to use the interior of that building. Um, for the foreseeable future as a museum. Yeah, I don't think it has to be really complicated. But I know, I understand, you know, their guard is up when we talked about expanding the parking right. and all that. When is that going to happen? Well, uh, we didn't have time to get to it this year. I really liked it. And it was a bad year to do it with everything else that was going into downtown. Right. Right. The paving project, right. you know, getting in there and trying to do something else was... And it came, you know, really permission to do it kind of came late in the season for us and the guys were already busy with other projects. So trying to get out and do something like that. I'd really like to do that next year um, and get into it. It won't take us long. But I think everybody's agreed and we've got the good drawings for, you know, ways to expand the parking you know, over there. And I don't see, especially on that in the town, that'll um, solve that problem for the foreseeable future for parking. And then we're working on another plan to reconfigure the Pleasant Street parking lot that would add a lot of parking spaces right. there. So I don't think the tree, the tree that's dying, gonna the get tree that's dying is going to move the side back. Um, and most everything that we were, you know, have decided upon now is actually in the right of way, except for where they actually want to take out the bushes. And they're fine with that. And they're too. fine with that. So I think you know, from that perspective, we're in pretty good shape on parking. Yeah. And so I don't see any other things. Right. And you know, and you know, the, the dog park. I know we're kind of back to the the, the why of yeah. what I'm wondering is you know, if we get together with uh, Dick Sargent, you know, as an attorney, and he can discuss with us what we want, what sure. what they want, and he can drop an agreement based on that. Yeah. Why don't I explore that a little bit more for the board, see you know what kind of terms they're looking at? I guess you know, just so give me a couple ideas on what kind of terms you're thinking too are you start protecting your rights so you're always going to own the land and the building right you know you, it's been deeded to you you own it um you know and i you know i think everybody agrees that that's the right the perfect place in the historic society be, belongs there and is there um you know i don't see that being used for any other purpose or in somebody coming in and somebody selling it to a business you know, I don't, I don't share that fear. But like Brian says, it yeah. should be spelled out who pays for what, you know, right. and, and all that. Yeah, because I, I, again, I like to work with everybody, and I I think it should be, like you said, that's where it should be. I just want to make sure we're protected, right. because that's the reason we jumped in the first place, is to right. improve it and, and, and keep it. Yeah. Actually, it was a pretty big liability until we put a lot of money into it. You know, it still would be if we don't continue to put money. There's still a lot of work to be done, you know. Um, but it's a treasure for the town. Yeah. So, does that sound good? You'll I'll start to the conversation with them, see what we can come up with, get something rough, and, and kind of be the middle man back and forth. Okay. You guys sound good? Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Next, uh, discuss social media policy. I've kind of filled in the blanks on this one for the board after the last discussion that we had and really made myself as the person, if anybody has to remove something that's been posted on there, that comes to me and I would be the only person that would be allowed to remove somebody's post. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll work, I'll point Erica, I think Sarah, and, Sarah. and, and, Trisha, and right? Trisha as the people that you know, do the postings and stuff. Um, and they, they monitor for me if there's anything that comes up, then I'll be the one that will make the final determination whether it should be moved and work with any individual here to understand, you know, what their free speech rights are, but what's, you know, um, what's, a, what's a comment that should not be on there. Yes. So, you're, you know, it's really, I'll be the person that will be the, to make that decision. So. Yeah. 
I was one. I had a couple of questions. I know the pages weren't numbered, but page four. And um, let's see. Say so one, two, maybe the third paragraph down says all comments posted. That it starts there. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. It just says um, the town reserves the right to report any violation. I'm not quite sure. Um, yeah. That's, that, that right. so it, it was, I think that's so that I could report something to Twitter or Facebook. I'd right. say there's a threat against someone. Or yeah, exactly. that sort of thing. Okay. Right. Yeah. All right. right. And. Um, I guess you take that. Oh, yeah, I must have missed that one because I've gone through that. Thanks. The next page. It's kind of one of those ones like this. This is my least favorite thing to do. Um, and I was on the last page um, on the open meeting laws. It says um, members elected or appointed. Is that also, you should be putting in there volunteers? No, because that still falls underneath the employee status. Okay. All right. And then uh, I guess down below section 13, enforcement against municipal officials we feel elected and appointed in there too, or is that is that there's there's statutory well actually you really can't take any any action against an elected official. But you could um, if there's a violation of the policy, not a disciplinary action, but at least some kind of um, uh, censure or yeah, something. I just, maybe it's something we add later, but when it goes in the, into the net, but I'd rather be more proactive than reactive. Or an interview or something like that. Or yeah, um, I think what that gets into is it's, if it's up to termination, there's already a lot of what I call statutory process already yeah. built in out there. And so there's already a process laid out, um, let's say, um, in the personnel policy. If, if, then that starts with me for any type of a termination process. So we, and like, I, you wouldn't be terminating us, but no. we could be impro improper. The, right. and there's, well, we can't, we're elected, so we wouldn't be terminated. But I see what you mean. If somebody goes awry, one of us goes crazy and does this, you know, yeah, inappropriate you post. You have the DRB, you have the planning commission, right. the record, you have all these people that are volunteering right. their time on committees, but they still could be right. inappropriate. Yeah, and we've had we've situations had that situation. before. So I, I didn't know if it could address that. You can't possibly dismiss them, but at least. Right, but you can censure them or you can call them out. Talk to them. Yeah. yeah I, just show I'm trying to think of a better choice of words, but yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with that. That's, uh, I don't know what we can put in there, Dan. I know what you're saying, too. But yeah. Um, already with, a big, with, with, with appointed officials, I mean, there's so many. <laughs> statutory rights that they already have and then certain actions that you can and can't take so it's hard to put them into a policy employees are a little bit different um, because there there are there is an, an employee policy and there's collective bargaining agreements that we have to follow and plus there's also what i call very rigid legal process to do that um but as a town for what we what we feel is inappropriate or appropriate, we can say right. And I don't want anybody, I don't want anybody to misconstrue this on what would be on their own personal page too, right? Because this doesn't really control their own personal page or right. what they may post. That's a completely different thing. Right. And since the only three people, I mean, they could respond to something. Um, and we can't control everything, but I just right. thought, and maybe it is. That's a hard one. It is. So the last time we talked about that, it kind of fell into a free speech sort of thing that we couldn't, right? Didn't have any ability That's a problem. to right. regulate. So I think it's where it gets into you know what this is. If anything gets, for lack of a better term, to simplify out of control and derogatory, then you're really giving me the responsibility to evaluate it yeah. and delete it, you know, from a page. Yes. And I think you're so probably once again give me the the responsibility. If something like that is there to bring it to you for any action that the board may take at that point in time. If it's right. you know an appointed person or elected person, if it's an employee, then I'm more I already have that kind of authority to start that. Would we need to put it in writing that that the 
town manager or the select board would uh, have a conversation with that person just sharing their concerns about the, the posting? Do you need to put that in writing or not? I don't think you need to put it in writing because I think that, once again, that all has to start to, with me to refer something to you. Okay. Um, okay. And I think that does two things. It, it puts me you know, in the responsibility position if I see some of those to take action one way or the other on it. Right. Um, and just handle it at my level or if I see fit then to, to refer it to the board for further action. For the most part, you guys have probably already seen it anyway. Right. Yeah. So. Um, and that's something we can do outside of this policy. Outside of policy anyway. I see what you're trying to do, you're right. But we can do it outside. But then you kind of have done it without this policy before. Yeah. Yes, we have a few times. Yeah. And it doesn't mean if, even once we had um, approved the policy, it doesn't mean it can't be changed out. Correct. Right. right. Good question. Is there any other questions about this? Do I hear a motion regarding it? Make a motion to approve the social media policy. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Yeah, I just have one uh, clarifying question. Will Does this go into what sort of acknowledgement of this is done for those in particular that I use it? There is a sheet that I fill out. It's not part of this, but there's a, a form that, that I have. Indicates that they've reviewed. That they've reviewed. Right. And will this be Good posted point. like on the town website so people can see it? We can do that. It could be, yeah. 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 I think it should be. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think it's. Um, it'd be nice for everyone just because there is... <coughs> There's the piece that's in there that municipal officials are discouraging using personal accounts to comment or post municipal information. Yes. You know, those that's the piece for me that is particularly correct. Uh, and we can make sure everybody has a copy of this. Yeah. It's not a problem. Make awesome. sure that they've acknowledged that they have a copy of it. Thank you very much. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Motion is passed. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Tim. Okay, we're Skipping to discussing zoning waivers. So number four, discuss Belanger Lane as a town road. Um, the board asked us to table this at the last meeting and yes. have Kevin go out and take a look around and see exactly what he would like to finish up. All right. I did meet with Ray. Um, uh, we were supposed to talk about the ledge at the top, the ledge off to the right hand side as you're going up. Uh, talked about the rocks out on the very end and the tree on the very end. He seemed all right with it. He was going to take it back to his group of people, and that's where we left it. Okay. So I think we're taking the ledge back about two to four feet, something like about that? About two feet. Seven mm -hmm. two feet. <clears throat> Do you folks have a comment about that? Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, we have all, all, we had a meeting, association, and we're going to do everything that is required. Uh, the machine's up there ready to take the ledge out. The trees down. The trees down. Yeah. It was dug out. There's a drain you put in, a nice base, a bed down. So I suggest that the town make a motion to accept Alonzi Lane as a town road on the condition that the ledge discussed at the last select board meeting to be moved to the satisfaction of Kevin the vote for him. We should have this done all before November 15th. That should all be finished. Maybe in, in the next week we might have it done. But we all agreed that the houses that are there, we're going to go ahead and take the legs out of there. We'll be discussed. What do you think about that, Kevin? Are you happy with it? Yeah. Do we set a precedent by approving something before it's done? I don't. Yeah, I think so. And I. Steps you're going to have to have another hearing on site anyway. Right now. Yeah. Um, we will. Yeah. 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 yeah, he would come up to inspect. Yeah. 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 So you're going to have to have another on site yeah. hearing anyway. Now we don't have the deeds yet either, do we? No. But we've done it before, I think, with um, a couple of them. We've done it, then the deeds have come to us. As long as everybody realizes it's part of your. Right. Your other exactly. motion that the, the land has to be deeded to the town. So it still has to happen. But, yeah. you know, um, yeah, I think it's easier, you know, Kevin's going to be happy with it, and just really I can get three, three of you together during the day at some point in time, have the quick on-site meeting, and have another hearing on-site, come back to the next board, and then have you make your official meeting. You know, I think everybody's worked through this process well to get 
to where we are today, so to yes. speak. Yeah. And it is a process. So, um, but I would recommend that we have the on-site hearing again. We're really required to, um, and we can do something. And you, that gives you guys time to get it done. I can we can start that process tomorrow as far as warning another on-site hearing um, and getting some confirmation of when you guys and three of you are available and go out and do it again and then do everything right and inspected and ready to go. How much time do we need for 30 days? Okay. So it takes us 30 days to one hearing. So, I mean, if you wanted to pick a date tonight to be able to do it, so that Erica's got to get the notices out to them. So give her a couple of days to, well, the letter already ought to be drafted and address, the addresses ought to be pretty easy to get to. So we got them in the mail Thursday, Friday. So the eleventh, we could do something as early as the thirteenth of November, just to give us a little cushion in it. Okay. I'm going to be around. And the three of you to go up and do it. And pick a time if you're around during the day, or. Uh, Tuesday before. Do it on a Tuesday, Friday. I can do it. Maybe we can get the links. I can do the 13th or 15th. Do you have the available? I'd be available the 13th, like after 10. Okay. Well, the, do I have three of you on the 13th? You do. Can't do Wednesdays. Right. I just said Tuesday because he doesn't work on Tuesday. Oh. You could do it at 4 o'clock, too, right? Yes. Something. All right. The 13th. Yeah, I could do it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> don't say that. <laughs> not quite. You don't say that. You're rushing it, Erica. Close. <laughs> Everybody will turn on their, their, their porch lights. Yeah. <laughs> so what date? The third, November 13th at 4 p.m. I can do it. Does that sound good? And we meet you know, at Valenti Road. We'll meet at Valenti all the way to the back of the turnaround. Mm -hmm. That way, everybody has to drive the whole road up. Okay. Good yeah. Okay. I'll make sure okay. I have a taco truck there. Yeah. <laughs> Some sort of business. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. Okay. Get the E equals MC squared. It's out there. Right. Just, uh, all right. Next, remove lien from William Bourne's property. This has been paid, actually. The lien was never recorded, but by the same token, it, I'd like the board to, uh, to vote to remove the lien. Make a motion to remove the lien from William Bourne's property. Second. I'll make a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Number six, equipment purchase for Vermont peanut butter. This is some more stuff that we have set in the yeah. storage right now that, that, that local business can use. I make a motion to approve the sale of uh, Vermont peanut butter uh, equipment to Sherman Enterprises, I think it's called. Yes. Yeah. Enterprises, three items in the total amount of $125. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Next, new business. Discuss planning council board membership. It's been a long time since we've been a full board strength on the planning council, and you know, five seems to be the number that we can get. We have to be able to get seven. Um, so Todd, as the planning director, has recommended that the official size of the um, council be at five rather than seven. I always wondered why we had seven. You know, I thought you know, it's much easier to get a quorum with five. But you can have as many as you want, right? You can, I think there's some, some, some limits on it. Yeah, it's going to be pretty yeah. odd. But if somebody else wanted to join, it could. No. But we've been looking for such a long time to try right. to fill these open seats that yeah. we haven't been able to find any volunteers to do it. Sign, sign, and break up. You said I'm in. <laughs> so, right, do five? Uh, it makes sense to me because that way they can get a quorum easier. Yep. I'll make a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Maybe we could say if at some time there's a lot more people interested, we could expand it to seven. We could always expand it back up. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. So pass. Next, discuss the HRA renewal for 2020. 
Um, as we've done in years past, you know, we've looked at the HRA and the insurance, the health insurance coverage that we've been providing to the employees. The HRA account actually is working exactly like we wanted it to when we created it. Um, but to keep pace with the health insurance costs, we're recommending a small increase to, you know, the, the, what an employee can draw from the HRA on an annual basis. It really impacts very few employees for us, but those employees that do max it out really appreciate the extra money because after this is when they're out of pocket expense. Mm -hmm. It doesn't cost the town any more. Uh, we're actually, I think this year, we're probably going to be lowering our, our contribution into the HRA because we're getting it to where it's stable now and now we're also understanding what our history is with it. So this is really you know, an employee benefit that benefits everybody. We raise it, we raise it for everybody. Um, bargaining unit or non-bargaining unit, so um, it's something that we've done successfully over the years. Once again, this is not an increase to a budget line item um, because we've been able to successfully manage it over the years. I'm, I'm certainly clueless on all of this, so I can ask a question may sound stupid. Sure. Um, do the employees have to pay more money? No. Okay. Less? Right. Less. Yes. Okay. This is actually a savings for the employee. Okay, good. So when you, um, you said it's not an increase in, it's an increase in, ex, potential increase in expense, but not an increase in budget. Correct. Okay, so yes. Yeah. Make that clarification. Yes. Yeah. It's almost like you knew that for a little bit. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and actually, you know, budget-wise this year, we're actually lowering, because the town does put money into the HRA every year, we're actually lowering the amount that we need to put into the HRA. Yep. It's a stable fund. So it's here. working. It's working. Um, and really what this is about, you know, our maximum, you know, um, liability, I guess. So, but we're well covered with what we have right now in reserve account. Sounds good. Do we want to make a motion? Make a motion to approve the HRA renewal for 2020 with the uh, proposed changes. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Do we have to, should it be read as it's written down here, I wonder? Does that matter? Sure. Okay. <laughs> sure. Amend that motion. Uh, it's as I Thanks, further Jim. indicated. Uh, that is renewed for 2020 HRA with levels of 9150 for two persons, adult plus children and family plans, and $4,075 for single plans. And Brian and seconded second. that, right? <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion to pass. Next, accept a resignation from William Smith. So, um, uh, Billy was a uh, 23 hour uh, permanent part time paramedic at EMS. Uh, he had a uh, change in hours and responsibilities that his full time employer uh, made it really difficult for him to continue to come here and do his 23 a week. Uh, we did uh, the better part of a month of me telling him what shifts were available, and he was unable to do any of those. So, uh, and just all the meeting hours or when he needed to fill a slot, and he offered his resignation. Okay. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Oh, sorry, do we have to lose a qualified person? Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion's passed. Next, approve the warrants. Uh, we have a, a point. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. The add yeah. on is, uh, is that a point? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, sorry, Bill. So, no, that's fine. Uh, so, the add on is in response to res that resignation, we posted that position in house. Uh, we had one applicant from inside uh, from inside the squad, uh, and that's uh, Peter Fitz, uh, who had uh, previously been in the position. He's one of the more senior members of the squad. Uh, he's completed his paramedic didactic uh, and is uh, in the process of finishing up his clinical time. And we anticipate that he's actually going to be uh, be able to operate for us at the paramedic level probably within the next four to six months once he completes clinicals. Uh, and he's, uh, he's the only applicant uh, for that position. Okay. Brian, do you have a motion? Yes. I move to appoint Peter Fitz as a permanent part-time EMS employee at 1550 an hour, working no more than 23 hours a week 
with no benefits effective immediately. Second. Got a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passed. Thank you. Thanks, Bill. Next, approve warrants. Make a motion to approve the warrants. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. TA report. Just a couple of things for me. Um, just so everybody knows, and you know, the department has no already, but you know, at the staff level, we're working through the budget for next year in the budget season, which is my easy reminder to you that we start that very soon at the select board level. So, um, are you sure it's time already for that? <laughs> well, you know, we get into one and we start a new one, so that's <laughs> it is time for that already. Um, so, just a reminder, it's coming. Um, we're all working on it. it, it, it once again, it, it'll get to you soon. Um, October 21st, the next select board meeting, um, there will be a public presentation by our engineer on the Act 250 um, permit uh, for Dew Hamill Pit. I want to start getting that word out there. Um, the other thing is I won't be putting a lot of other stuff on that agenda because I know that will take a lot of time that night. So we're kind of, folks are asking there, me. Yeah, so it's, it's ready. Uh, I've been kind of into, um, meeting with board members individually to go through it. If you guys have any questions, um, before then, please let us know. So, um, and Chris, if you get with me, you know, we'll set something up at some point in time to do it. It's been a lot of work. I think it took a little bit longer than what everybody anticipated, but um, working with the state agencies can be a bureaucratic process to get through. So, um, just a reminder, that's what we have planned. Um, and I would like to thank everybody for Rocktoberfest, especially Trish, um, putting it together from what I heard. It was a really, really great event. Um, mm -hmm. Highways there, PD's there, EMS is there. Everybody's doing something you know, to, to make that a good event for the town. And from everything that I know, it was a great day and a great event. So just a, a thank you to everybody that worked on that. That's all I have. That's great. Any questions for Dan? No. Thanks, Dan. Next, suck board concerns. Judy. Um, I read everything uh, that you said about Rocktoberfest. I was there and it was really, really nice event. Weather didn't cooperate, but can't control that. Um, I saw the minutes from, from the last meeting that I missed. You mentioned about bicycles on Randolph. Mm -hmm. And now one of the other issues is there's no shoulder, and then there, the people travel too fast, and they don't respect the bicyclists, even though some of the bicyclists are not riding single file. Um, I love the artwork out in Tavia here. It's great. And uh, some of Erica's paintings are lovely. They've been displayed in the offices too. And Bill setting up the coverage for um, Sandra Duffy. Really appreciate that. Thank you. Chris? I don't really have much. <laughs> I can understand. <laughs> Brian? I just wondered about the parking out here in front of the TQ that's not marked. Right, I had some of the, some of the ones that we didn't have the village put back in because the way the state was going to have to do it was really going to eliminate some spots. So, and Doug hasn't had time or weather cooperation to get any of that done. So a lot of that will probably come back next spring. I had him concentrate on the other projects that he was working on in Main Street over in the area where that is. So if people would have been really unhappy with the state's parking plan out in front of these two buildings on both sides of Portland Street if the state would have done what they needed to do. So I just didn't have anything put in there. Okay, I just wanted to see they weren't there. Yeah. And I figured he had plenty of time. <laughs> so it didn't make any sense to have it. Then, you know, then we end up with the, the markings in the wrong spot that don't work. So I just told the state to delete it from the contract so that we can do it. What yep. works for okay. the town a little bit better. Yep. That's all I had. Okay. And I just want to comment one more time about how great I think the paving was. And um, now that they're 99% they're done, it seems, you know, with the line marking done and, and all the aprons done and everything, I just think it was just a long time coming and a great thing. You can now drive through town with a cup of coffee and not spill it all over the place, which is great, you know. And uh, I have a lot of positive comments, a few negative ones, but I think mostly the negative was because things weren't quite done. And now that the air everyone seems happy, including myself. Uh, the other thing I wanted to thank was Morristown EMS for what they did to honor Sharon Duffy. 
thought that was fantastic and you know sad sad of her passing but it's pretty proud to be proud of the town we had uh, we had a lot of support from our district partners uh so the senate crew up here to cover for us uh so we could all be there it was uh saturday was a good day under bad circumstances for us it was uh, uh it was kind of like having all the kids from college home for a day mm -hmm. uh, because all everybody was there tom or sharon and uh, our district four partners uh helped us with uh, with arrangements and uh you may have seen the pictures of the uh, of the uh, the procession from uh, from here to johnson for the church it was a it was a good day on the bed circumstances pretty impressive thank you yeah, um, november 9th uh, uh, friends of Sharon from the squad and from some of the other places uh, that she uh, uh, that she was with uh, were doing a, uh, a benefit dance uh, and you'll start to see some of that we're getting now that's uh, great and, uh, in order to support her family with some of their some of their expenses that's great thank you I forgot to ask a question too late <laughs> go ahead LCPC that's up to you guys when you would like that back on the agenda. So I think part of it's been a little stalled given my personal circumstances. So we have it. Right. So now that I um, yeah. am and, home. And we also want to have a full board <laughs> available. I did uh, have contact with the village trustees and they did let me know that they were going to uh, back us up whatever we decided they want to, they want to go the way we go. So that's kind of nice. They thought we know a lot more about it right now, and uh, they they vote our way. So that's that's good to hear. So hopefully Bob and I can circle back. Okay. Because we still are yeah. need to connect with their uh, their board. Yes. Uh, which we haven't done, given I things rapidly changed for me about a month ago. <laughs> Hopefully we could have a chance to do it before the next meeting, maybe. Yeah. Yep. Is it something we could do at the 21st, or is that going to be too much? I would not recommend that. I just, you know, knowing the history on the, the Dilemma Fit discussion yeah. and getting through the presentation and the questions. And it's going to be a full room and a full agenda. It's going to be a full agenda. Just even the, you know, the, the housekeeping stuff that we normally do. Um, we will have to do plus the discussion, you know, and there's been a lot of discussion about it. It's an important community topic for what goes yes. on up there. And uh, maybe the 4th, November 4th. Yeah, I think we could easily do that. Okay. okay. That's good. Thank you. All right. Next. Any other business? Sonny, did you come for a reason? Uh, well, I did come for lots of reasons, but a couple specifically. Um, equals MC Square is really growing quickly and a lot of kids are, are playing there um one concern is cars are driving pretty quickly on that little union street i don't know why they're driving so fast down there but kids are playing basketball and they're all kind of out there union bank has those temporary like drill in drill out sort of speed bumps any chance of possibly i don't know how we would be able to get put a couple there maybe one in front of the center and one on the back side of the center take them out in the winter time so the plows can go through, but put them back in in the spring, in the summer, in the fall. Is that a possibility for something? I don't know how would I go about doing that. That, that would be, that's one thing. And then the other one was some signage. Because a lot of people sometimes are like, well, where are you? And we're like, we're behind the fire department. And so I don't know if we can get some sort of like the signage that you have that says, you know, equals MC squared this way or 0.5 miles or whatever. Some of the signage that you have around town those are state signs yeah we we do the the road marking sign or maybe a road marking of something where it just has an equals mc square community center or something with an arrow or you talk to todd about how the zoning laws are yeah because there's yeah there's the zoning regulations should i does that should i go talk to todd yeah we should meet with todd okay just maybe like on the corner of summer or something that yeah there are some restrictions okay that's not typically a sign that we put up right okay um, and there's some there's some restrictions on because that you can't you have to talk to Todd about what kind of sign it is the square footage what kind of sign it can be yeah um, and then there's some uh, I can't remember all about off-site signage too yeah yeah, yeah. so um, I don't mind talking about Todd yeah. but um, the, the speed bump yeah, the speed bumps are a tough thing because uh, the, the minute you start putting holes in pavement kind of 
he grades it tremendously. You know, Kevin will tell you that. Um, I guess I don't know what to think about that. You know, it's, it's there's a lot of considerations. Number one, there's the emergency vehicles because you start putting speed bumps up. You got to remember you're looking yeah. at one specific area, but then it becomes one of those things that you're doing in multiple, multiple locations. Um, so road crews don't like them for all the right reasons because they're hard on the equipment. Emergency responders don't like them. And then there, there's also, you know, nighttime especially, they're not visible. I mean, they, they work kind of in the parking lot areas, but on streets, if you're an emergency vehicle and you're responding someplace and you don't see it, or if you're a private vehicle and you don't see it, then it puts some liability back on the town. Could there be what a speed dips with reflectors on them? Um, and then once again in the winter, what happens is those things become a nightmare for your crews that are out there cleaning up the streets. So I was um, thinking about something like like the crosswalk signs are in the middle of the road, you know, not a crosswalk sign, but something like that. It's a couple of them that's up there and it kind of makes you slow down. I mean, are we are we legally allowed to go purchase those ourselves? Well, be put them there? Us. Yeah. Okay. We'd have to put them out. Any any kind of thing, because I'm just getting concerned that we can take a I, don't, I just don't want a kid to get hit. Right. I mean, I we're, agree with you. we're we're we're. I mean, we're averaging like fifty kids a day now, yeah. and they're out. They're playing. They're like they're out there playing foursquare. They're playing basketball. Right. The upstairs is almost done, so kids are just going to be like all over the place. And I don't. I just don't want to see a kid get hit by right. somebody just not thinking. Yeah. Well, you're like the third person is came, came to us about this. Well, it's, I just you know the the more it grows and it's not. It's, I mean, not all the kids, the soccer kids aren't even there yet because it's soccer season. So we've got another 30 kids that are going to be coming. So it's going to be. It's a good problem to have. Yeah, no, it's a great problem to have. I just want to make sure, I want to, whatever we can do to make it safe, to make it safe for them yeah. would be great. I mean, I'll stand out there with a slow stop sign if I have That's to. Your job sign. <laughs> yeah. It's my other third job, fourth job. <laughs> Is there any. Um any visual barrier for the kids so they know they can't just run out on the street? Like you have to saw horses or something else? No, the basketball board goes right into the street, basically. Like there's no, they're they're not, they're playing yeah. basketball in four square. They're not thinking. I mean, we were reminded, hey, slow down, stop when a ball goes across. Um, my, my concern is about the people who are driving. Like they're not conscious of, go, of how fast they're going. They're just flying down that road. Even when there's a parent pulled over to pick up a kid, someone will pull behind them and be like, Zzz. and it's like, what are you doing? Like, slow down. You're there's, don't we see all these kids out here? So I don't. I want to just some sort of a I don't know, blinking light or anything, whatever we can put up, just to be like, hey, this there's people out here playing. Yeah. Any way we can. I, I like your idea of like the. The crosswalk that has the um, right up by the rail trail, it's got that yeah. little sign right there. Like people forget about it, but every now and again, you do remember maybe a taller one or something. I don't really know. But. Yeah, I can sit every morning, four in the morning to yeah. get that one on the Oh, yeah, exactly. Get your attention. But if it, if it was something you worked with Doug, Kevin, Dan about what type of sign, I think we might But I mean, like you said, too, maybe even putting a couple crosswalks. <laughs> in the road, just painting them that, you know, they have to, don't you have to kind of stop for that or no? Yeah, I don't think that's the right approach. Okay. Uh, anyway, I'm just putting it out there. What, what do I need to do to let you guys talk about it first and then? Yeah. Well, we can, you know, we can work with Doug and we can see what kind of sign we can find. You, you know, the, the crosswalk signs, see what we can find something a little bit different. We do take those down in the winter, though. Because, yeah, yeah. I, it, I haven't. It hasn't been such a concern in the winter. It's mostly been the, the okay. spring and the fall. And the summer. <laughs> some oh, we'll, we'll find something yeah. to put out there in the middle of the the street for you. Just to have them, just like basically, if you're going to speed through, you're going to hit the sign. Right. Perfect. Can, can, yeah, are there ones that you can put? Ones that they can put out when the kids are there in the middle That's of the street. That's kind of what we do with ours. About? Is we yeah. put them out. And take fifty-five yeah, people. Cement yeah. drum in the middle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That might be like, <laughs> that's what we do at camp. Yeah. All right. Well, one thing too over the years, Richard's always said, if you see somebody you really thinks the same person doing it all the time, get their number and call the police and they'll check it out. Yeah. Because again, I don't see yeah. putting speed bumps on them. We just smooth the roads out, so I don't yeah, see yeah. You putting speed this bumps out. You're, you're making a street into a playground. Yeah. You know, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. 
So it doesn't matter how fast your cards are going to go. The chart right. cards out front of it. And we just had it off Cherry Ave. So, yeah, you get, I would suggest you fence it off. Yeah, if you truly want to control children out in the street. So, you know, that's a short street. I doubt highly if it's ever over 30 miles an hour maximum. I, you'd have to really punch it to get that kind of speed. I'll, I'll video it for you. <laughs> Go ahead. But it's still fast. I'm just saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A you don't want to get getting ahead at 15. A fence is a good idea. Like one that's one. Things yeah. you can roll up at the end of the day and just put it yeah. out when you need it. Yeah, like a snow fence or something. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to comment on that. I live right around the corner on 4th Street. Uh, I was wondering if there's any regulation on how many adults per kids there is. I literally come around the corner and come to a complete stop and all the kids in the road and had to like yell out the window, hey, can you guys get out of the road so I can get through and the kids will holler at me and stuff. So. There, there's, there's generally three adults there per day um it's it's 12 and over kids so they can come and go as they please um sometimes there's four adults a lot of times there are more adults because bi's and, and and other adults from the community bring their one-on-one -on -one kids there as well i mean they're not responsible for them. all the other kids there but they pitch in as well um, but generally there's there's three adults every day, sometimes four I, I uh, but if you're if you're having if you do have an issue with any of the kids talking back to you, please come see me and I'll take care of you. Okay. I was just asking you, Richard, on um, like the street can't be around. Yeah, well, it's not supposed to be. They're supposed to stay on the basketball court, but they obviously come on and off of there. But yeah, we'll we'll we, we'll take care of it as best we can. I'm sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Starting up the business. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to adjourn. So Second. Second. She's ready to go. Okay, <laughs> 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 so fast. <laughs>